my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this one right here. Victor Wembanyama, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I am finished. I'm finished with Victor Wembanyama. And look, all last season in this summer, I said this was the guy that was going to be the monster of the NBA. He was going to go nuts. Wasn't nobody going to hold him back. Pop held him back last year. This guy was just running up and down the damn court, not playing an actual position, not doing nothing on the court, all this stuff. And I should have seen it coming. I should have seen it coming that it was going to be more shenanigans from this guy going forward, right? In the championship, the gold medal round in the Olympics, what did this guy do? They were pulling him in and out the first quarter, the second quarter, like he was a rookie again on the damn Spurs. Like they were trying to hold him back. Yet LeBron, Kevin Durant, old ass Curry, all these dudes who are older were just playing basically the entire game. Second in Olympics, Victor Wimbenyama did not dominate. Not in the gold medal round and really not even in the entire tournament. <laughs> Look at this. I know it's early in the season. And they are two and three. Only played five games. But so far, the dude that they said, oh, he was in the weight room. He was in the weight room. getting big. I don't care about no damn weight room for what? Who is bodying this guy? Who is down low giving this guy the business? Is it Patrick Ewing? Is it Akeem? Who is it? Is it Alonzo Mourning? Is it Shaq? Who are the dominant big man centers that are, that are down low stopping this guy? He don't even play in the damn paint, really. Why is he in the weight room? And I'm not knocking the guy for being in the weight room. What I'm doing is this guy said he was hitting the weights, getting some muscle, working on his game some more, and this is what he's averaging so far in the regular season. 18 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, shooting 23% from the three, a guy who is launching all these threes in 41%. You could say 42% from the field. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'd rather watch Bronny play then watch this guy play right now. Being this guy has so his expe expectations were through the roof coming into the season, especially as a rookie. It's season two, Victor. What the hell is going on? You're supposed to be coming out here scoring no less than thirty points per game. I don't give a damn. You're seven foot five. Get your ass to the paint. Who is going to stop you? Who's going to stop this guy? Look at this. In 31 minutes, which he should, this guy should be playing, let me see, 31 minutes. Why is he only playing 31 minutes? Um, 91% from the free throw line? So he's a good shooter. 10 rebounds, that's not good enough. 10 rebounds for somebody 7'5", it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. Um, like I said, three three point two assists, three blocks. That's good, but he is seven five. But we can't knock him on that. He's getting one steal, three point six turnovers. That's that's not gonna cut it. Not when you're only averaging three assists. No, that's not gonna cut it. In is this sixteen? Or, no, yeah, eighteen points per game. Come on, man. Uh, what is going on with this guy? They, they need to fire a pop. Let, let this guy go. This is a straight embarrassment. I know he had a couple good games, um, Victor Wimbenyama, but this is not good enough, man. This guy should be dominating. This guy played over there in the Euro League where these guys can ball and, and, and play with fundamentals and stuff. Why isn't this guy in the paint? Why is he? The last game he shot 13 threes. Oh, my God. What's going on, man? Is this, is this part of the rigged league? Because to me, 
I don't care if nobody want to say it, but to me, I think they held Zion Williams back. I, I, I really do. Now that we know the league is not a real sports league, we can actually say they held Zion Williams back. And a lot of people say, man, you full of it, man. That man, you know, he ate himself to death. He gained all this weight. I'm trying to tell you, this guy was going to be, he was the biggest hype coming into the NBA since LeBron James. And you could even say bigger because at least he went to college and he was playing against real college players. LeBron was dunking on academy school boys playing against nobody, right? So Zion had already, you know, showed what he could do at Duke. And Zion was so hyped. You guys don't remember. Everybody was going to, you know, coming to the arenas to see him, the McDonald's game, his rookie season, the summer, the, the summer league, all this stuff. Everybody was coming to see Zion. They wasn't doing this for Victor Wimbenyama. He was great. The hype was there, but it wasn't like like what was going on for Zion. I know that Zion, you know, he's American. But look, man, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I would not put it. Look, man, we could hope make a whole video about Zion Williams. There's no reason why the New Orleans Pelicans should be paying him this kind of money for not even playing. The NBA is getting to be a joke. And like I told you guys before, I don't think these guys are making this kind of money. Nobody's watching this garbage in the first place. How can they give these guys this kind of money? Yes, they're making money through, you know, some TV revenue. Yes, some, you know, revenue from fans and jersey sales and merch and stuff like that. But these record-breaking contracts, they're making this kind of money and these guys aren't even playing? Nobody's watching this garbage? <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm a... I, I hear these guys out here saying now, oh, this, you know, NBA, former NBA players, other channels. I've been saying this for a long time. It's not a real sports league, right? But I was saying it a long time ago because I'm not monetized. So nobody wanted to really even say that, that it's, a, it's, it's basically WWE. And with that, how can these guys be making this kind of money? They don't show up for work. They don't go out there and, and grind. Like I told you, if it's just entertainment, they could just say these guys are making this kind of money to charge the fans all this money to go see them play for merch, everything like that. Imagine Scotty Pippen <laughs> when he was dealing with his contract. Yes, he signed a bad contract. Saying, say, uh, forget it. I'm not coming to work. My back hurts. No, nope, he didn't do that. But these guys... <laughs> They toenails hurt, they back hurt, they feeling under the weather, they're not playing, all this low management. How is he guy making all this kind of money, man? How is a, a guy who wasn't even top 10 in the league, probably wasn't even top 15 at the time when Jalen Brown got the biggest contract of all time, wasn't even the number one player on, on his team, he got the biggest contract of all time. How? How? Say what you guys want. We're not here to do that video. Um, I, I can see it coming pretty soon. By everybody who's waking up, <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of people's getting frauded on this whole notion that these guys are making this kind of money. And that's probably why they're not playing, because they're not making this kind of money. If they are, the NBA is literally stealing from their fans, literally stealing. From, well, they are anyways. If you're charging these kind of rates for tickets and everything else, and you've been telling people they're making this kind of money, why are you charging the fans this much money? Anyways. Let's get back to it. I'm done with Victor Wimbenyama. I'm, I'm done with this dude. Until he shows me something different, there's no damn way this guy shouldn't be averaging 30, 12. I don't care about the assists. Maybe five assists, whatever like that, and then three blocks. There's no, there's no, and then I'm talking about even more as the years go on. This year, this guy shouldn't be averaging no less than 30 and damn 12. There's no way. He shouldn't. Who's going to stop him? So if he can't average that, guess what? Either the NBA is trying to stop him from getting all the hype, getting all the glory, getting all the pub, right? And he got to wait in line or, or, or some crazy stuff like that. Or he just ain't good enough. He just ain't that good enough. What in anybody's right mind would a, would a player like this, 7'5", that has handles, <laughs> why would you sit out there and launch threes? You throw me the ball in the paint. Nobody can stop me. If they come double me, I'm throwing it out to my guys on the three-point line. It's over. Don't you know they was doing that with Hakeem, right? 
They did that with Hakeem. You try to come double Hakeem, what happened? Bombs away. Kenny Smith, um, Mad Max, um, even Robert Ory was shooting threes back then to some extent. Um, I can't remember all these guys' names that was on the um, on that team that was bombing away at three. But yeah, all, all these guys, if you try to stop Hakeem, they was bombing away. Same thing when, when, when Shaq was in Orlando. Guess what? You try to stop Shaq. You had Nick Anderson. You had uh, Dennis Scott. You had these boys, Skiles, bombing away from three. What, what? I don't understand. Why aren't they doing that with Victor Wimbenyama? This guy has been the biggest disappointment this season. I don't want to hear nothing about this guy's second year in the league. It's a weaker era. He's not playing in the 80s and 90s. He ain't playing great big man. There's nobody in the middle. Throw him the goddamn ball and let him go to work in the paint. There's nobody there. All you guys are at the three-point line. I don't get this. It, it, it seems like another conspiracy to stop a big name from LeBron James getting all the pub. And this guy's getting all the pub. It don't matter if he's got a good game, bad game, winning, losing. All the publicity goes towards him. Joker didn't get no good players this year. I mean, come on. The Victor Wimbin, y'all ain't got no, no great player this year. Hell, LeBron has a better team than Joker, Wimbenyama, a lot of guys. And they ain't, they ain't about nothing because they know if they lose, they can still get pub. So why go out there and, and try to be good when you're getting all the pub? So I, I'm done. I should have known with this dude right here. Look how this guy's standing. Like a sissy. In a way, he shook somebody's hand. I seen the video. You seen the video? I think it was during the Olympics or something. This guy shook another man's hand. He grabbed it like all limpy. And shook his hand all limpy like a sissy. You know, <laughs> I, I'm done with that. I try to tell you guys, heterosexual people don't hang around gay people. No offense. I don't have nothing against gay people. But I, I'm trying to tell you, we did a video on this before. Gay people hang around gay people. Straight people hang around straight people. Maybe it's like, you know, a, 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 a company function or some kind of function. Fine. But... Uh, <laughs> Don't get it twisted, man. Some of these dudes is straight fruitcakes in the NBA, in, in professional sports. They do fruitcake things. And speaking of this, as we go into the LeBron James thing, you know, I thought his his son, I don't know, I seen about three, three years ago, maybe. Maybe two years. I'm thinking about three. I don't know, man. Looked like this guy was eating a lot of fruity pebbles. Bryce? And <laughs> he's talking about bringing Bryce into the league. So what does that mean? That means LeBron plans on playing another two years, right? Look at this. At least a, a, another another two years if that's the case, right? Never heard of this guy being a great player. He's supposed to be a six foot six guard. And I'm looking at his Wikipedia right here. I don't know. I just seen his photos. He I don't know who he looks like. He don't look like his mom. He don't look like his dad. So on Wicca. This is uh, Bryce. What's this? Maximus James? <laughs> That's his name? Bryce Maximus? Wow, man. Born June 14th, 2007. Is an American basketball player. Huh. This guy got his own profile like he's an adult. Um, or he's like a businessman or a celebrity. Uh, he is the second child of the younger brother of the National Basketball Association player, LeBron James and Bronny. <laughs> Ooh, respectively he primarily plays the shooting guard position as of march 2020 he is six foot six um in 180 pounds uh james was born on june 14 2007 in cleveland ohio to lebron and savannah james this is what gets me when they say when you go to the celebrity profiles and they talk about their children or whatever, they say James was born to LeBron in Savannah. What do you mean born to? He was born and given? You see this a lot with celebrities when you look up, look them up on, on um, Wikipedia. It says born to such and such parent. What do you mean born to? They gave birth. So it should say um, James, let's just say Savannah James gave birth. To such and such. To Bryce James. Not born to. What, what does that mean? Adopted? Are these people adopted? <laughs> so, let, let this is the whole thing. He's going to try to get his son in here. 
we already seen it's a mockery with Bronny James. He's not a real basketball player. Now he's trying to get it. I try to tell you, man, the NBA is not a real sports league. Not a real sports league. Um, and I told somebody too. I said, look, when I see when I when I seen Bryce about three years ago, I, I, he looked like he about to come out of the closet. He looked like he gonna be the the James son that's gonna come out of the closet. Just his demeanor, the way he was acting and stuff like that. He he was real flamboyant. And let me try to tell you what. When I tell you heterosexual people and gay people don't kick it like that, not because of hate or anything like that, just like Brazilian people and Mexican people, they don't kick it. Different people, different culture. They don't hate each other. It's just the way it is. So when you hear about <clears throat> the whole Pete Diddy thing, is he gay, is he straight, sleeping with men? Don't get it twisted, man. All these Hollywood people is like that. Okay. Biggie knew he was like that. All his bodyguards, all, all these people are like they hang around each other. What I'm trying to say is, we all know the Wayne Way son is, is, is fruit loopy, right? We already know that. And guess what? LeBron and Wade been good friends for a long time, and their children. So <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna just keep it right there, man. And LeBron, he be doing a lot of suspect things that don't make any that, that don't look heterosexual to me. It don't look heterosexual to me. So, if, if Bryce is, I ain't got no problem with that. But I could just see that, though. I could see that. Just like Dwayne Wade's son. Why, why did we have to know he was gay? First of all, he's under 18. Why, why did we want to know that he's gay and he want to be a, a transgender on top of that? Why, why? Why? Why was that important that he come out to the public, Dwayne Wade, and tell us? That don't make any sense. He feel that he's gay. That's fine. Why, why do we have to know? Why are you announcing it to the public? And that's a problem with black folks. For a long time in this country, everything they do has to be announced to the world. To the world. Everything has to be announced in the world. To the world. It's ridiculous. Um. So good for him. If, if Bryce James is... If he comes out later on, that's fine with me. But I'm just saying, I seen him a few years ago. He was looking real flamboyant and suspect to me. Um, I seen this thing. And I was talking about Hakeem and Shaq just a minute ago. And <laughs> I think I was watching, what was I watching? Sports and Fitness Rants. He was talking about how Michael Jordan, you know, he was a true competitor. And he was talking about at one point, you know, when the Magic beat him. And Jordan could just walk off the court and been mad. But he was a real competitor. He, he shook their hands and everything, even though they hoisted Grant Hill, uh, uh, Horace Grant, up on somebody's shoulders. And they were screaming, yeah, going all crazy and stuff like they really just won the NBA championship. And I think they had to play another round, if I'm not mistaken. I think did they played the Knicks um, in the Eastern Conference Finals. I forget. Well, I thought they did. So eventually the Magic did get to the Finals. And this is what makes you a legend right here. And this is why you never put Shaq in front of Hakeem. It's not even close. You guys think just because Shaq three-peated and he's supposed to be this most dominant player of all time. So check this out. This is what made Hakeem a legend over most centers, right? Even Shaq. Not just because of his game, his all-around game, but the way he won his titles. Right? He won back-to-back -back titles beating Ewing in a game seven and basically making Ewing have a bad series, right? Because of Hakeem. And then he went back to back sweeping Shaq. Or was it the other way around? Who, who? Did Shaq? Yeah, yeah, it was that way. Because that's right, because Jordan um, lost in, in 95. But yeah, he went back to back. Sweeping two of the great centers of all time. What great centers can Shaq say he played that was even close to what Hakeem played in those finals, in those back-to-back -back finals. None. None. He could say Matumbo, but Matumbo was just a one-way player. Great player, we all know. But you look at the other centers, they play Rick Smith and the, the other guy from the Nets. It's not even close. Shaq ain't even on Hakeem's level. And what I want to say, too, is... I think what they did when they walked off the court and they were celebrating like that and, you know, 
they, they weren't just like, you know, humble about the whole thing until they got to the finals. You guys know that Hakeem and Michael Jordan are like best friends. <laughs> you know, Hakeem and Michael Jordan are like best friends. And it wouldn't surprise me. It probably never came out. I'm not trying to say this happened, but it wouldn't surprise me. If Hakeem and Jordan had a good talk as friends. And Hakeem, after this good talk, went in there and destroyed the Orlando Magic. Now, we're not trying to say that Shaq had a bad series, but when you don't even win one damn game, even Patrick Ewing, with the bad series he had, won one damn game. They, they went to game seven, if I'm not mistaken. So Shaq pretty much learned after that he was done. He was dumb, and he better be glad Hakeem had already got old. I, I, we, that's what we try to tell you guys. This was a different NBA back then. As good, as great as Shaq was, a dominant force. And he was, he was, some people say he was more athletic. He had better skills in Orlando because he took care of himself. It was a different league back then. It was a different league. It was a man's league. And Shaq went over there to the West after that, after the next season when Jordan swept him. <laughs> the two best friends swept this dude. They didn't play back then, man. Real men played basketball back then. Real men were, when you look back at it, they were setting their name in stone as dudes who did what? Had legendary moments. Making themselves legends. Right? Not choking in the finals, not going around the league and saying not one, not two, not three, not building all these damn super teams in, in, in their prime. They wanted to be legends in their own rights. Right? Th this is a whole different NBA. And, and, and what I try to tell you guys before, they do all these things, right? They change these rules, they let these guys do this. It, it, it's a social media NBA, uh, podcast NBA. Why? Because they know these guys do not have what the 80s, 90s, 70s, and 60s players had in them. Two-way players, hustle players, grit players, went out there and practiced, played like men, and played NBA basketball. They didn't let other people not only come over and take over the game, which I have no problem with international players. Patrick Ewing, international player. Hakeem, international player. But my point is, they didn't let international players come over here and change the game. Change the game. And why they have to change the game? Because these international players were playing the game that's played today in the NBA, right? And they were beating the NBA, the American NBA players with their type of game. See, the, the American style basketball, it wasn't being upheld. <clears throat> and we saw that in the 04 Olympics, 06 FIBA, right? So it eventually had to change. And not only that, they changed it <laughs> to even make it easier for the American players so they can look good, so they have to do less, so they don't have to hustle, so they can look like they're better. They look like they're better. Not only do you shoot a lot of threes, but you shoot a lot of uncontested threes. Not only do you shoot a lot of threes, you get all these picks to shoot your threes. Not only are you driving in the lane with nobody in there, you get a switch on a smaller guy so you can do these drives. Go watch how many times Michael Jordan had a, had a pick or Scottie Pippen had a pick, especially at the top of the key. That's what these guys do. They get picks at the top of the key so they can drive in. If you ever watched the, the, the way um, John Stockton and Carl Malone did the pick and roll, it was to the basket, right? It wasn't a one-on-one, -on -one, give me a pick on this guy up top so I can drive to the basket or I can get a smaller guy on me so, so I can get to the basket. These, <laughs> it's a joke, man. It, it's a joke. This NBA is the biggest joke of all time, the way they're playing basketball. Um, I seen this on 
What was it? Angry Old Hoops. <laughs> and he made a video. Basically, LeBron and the rest of the NBA, because you just can't put this on LeBron, but I guess he was talking about LeBron the most because they just like boast about all these rebounds he gets and it's flat footed. They're uncontested. There's nobody under the basket. Even the one guy that's supposed to be under the basket, the center, because all the three point guys, defenders, or the offensive players, whatever, you got eight guys sitting at the damn three point line, but the one guy that could get the rebound, the offensive rebound, he don't even try. He just take off. <laughs> so basically, what you got is a scripted NBA. Because I told you guys before, I said, what are they running? The Princeton, the Triangle, what offense are these guys running? Well, they're running the same offense. Four guys at the three, one guy in the middle. So I said this before. It begs the questions, question, how are these guys real coaches? How is Doc Rivers, let's take an old school guy like this, Doc Rivers, who coached in the early 2000s, in the 210s, when they wasn't playing none of this four guys at three-point line thing, how is he coaching in this era when he knows nothing about coaching this? How does, it, how does this make any sense? How does Charles Barkley, um, Shaq, Kenny not call this entire NBA out as a fraud. This ain't the game you played. This ain't the game you was an analyst as in the 210s or the 2000s. So how could you be analyst to this game, a three-point contest? How can you sit there and analyze a an NBA game that was in the NBA league, I mean American league, that's no longer an American NBA league? I don't want those guys. That... To, to be analyzing these, these games, to be analysts. Because this ain't the game they played. This is like people saying, oh, Jordan was in this era. I wouldn't want Jordan in this era. Barkley, Duncan, uh, uh, Bird, Magic Johnson, these guys would not exist if they was in this era. Their legacies and their legends would not exist no more. There's nothing legendary about what these guys are doing. As much as people like Joker, this guy is doing nothing but stat padding like LeBron James. He's controlling all the damn assists. He's not a great floor general. He just always has the ball, and then he throws it to some guy. Now he's got an assist. Always got the ball, now throws it to a guy, got the assist. Who's a great center is he going against? He's just out here stat padding. How can you have a real offense? And I hear people mad because they're not doing too good, but who is your real point guard? Well, how come you ain't letting him run a damn point guard? You got to get all your damn assists and everything just running through a damn center. That ain't basketball. What are we doing? It's a joke, man. Now LeBron James, he's endorsing um, Kamala Harris. Of course he is. Of course he is. That's what black people... It, black people... <laughs> this, this, this is an abusive situation, right? Every four years, the black community gets abused, right? For, no, for four years, my fault. The black community gets abused. Okay, one in four years is almost up. Here comes the husband. Oh, I love you, baby. You're the most beautiful thing in the world. I couldn't do it without you. I'm so sorry. I cheated on you. I hit you. I, I cussed at you. She takes him back. Boom. What's he doing again? Abusing her, hitting her, cheating on her, cussing her out for four years again. Right when the four years about to end, say this ain't. Oh, you're so beautiful. I don't know why I did this. I would never cheat on you again. And this has been going on forever. With black people, they've been getting abused for so long. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like numb. And the, the, the <laughs> they got the abusive wife syndrome. That's what the Democratic Party is to them. In voting is to them, right? Let, let's go back to so-called slavery. If we believe this, the, the slavery story of black people, as far as like the whole thing being true. Now, were black people slaves? Yes. But we found out that thousands and thousands of black people owned slaves, right? And we're businessmen. And there was no such thing as real slavery, only um, indentured slavery, until almost the damn 1800s. There wasn't no real. Before that, it was just indentured slavery, right? And one of the first slave masters we found out was Anthony Johnson, was a colonist, right? One of the first. So, <laughs> but let's let's believe it's all on the up and up, right? What they tell us. Like, I don't even see how anybody could believe anything through history. It's so fake. You could just read it and be like, what? What are they talking about? But Abraham, when slavery was over, Abraham Lincoln had a chance 
to show black people he was about what he wanted to do, right? Free him from slave, uh, slavery. So what did he, what did he do? He put all, his pe all Republicans, Abraham Lincoln, you win the war, you put your people in place. That's what they did in the South. And what they do, they told the black people, well, you can't vote if you don't register your land, you don't go to school, blah, blah, blah. Right. So black people can vote and do that stuff for a long time through Jim Crow. Because you got to remember, Abraham Lincoln and the Republicans put in that Jim Crow laws, not the Dem not the Democrats, the Republicans. They won the war. They put that stuff in there. They put their people. We, we, we look at um, we can look at other things. We can look at Bill Clinton. Remember, he was supposed to be the first black president. He didn't do nothing for black people. So, so, so he, he was a, a black, white president. Obama. This was the biggest thing in the world. Didn't do nothing for black people. Biden lately didn't do nothing for black people. <laughs> and here we are again. Black people is about to get abused again. Only people been getting all this treatment, great treatment, is who? Immigrants, companies and corporations in other countries. Billions of dollars going to these people, but black people get nothing. But more abuse. And this is who LeBron endorses. Because you know why? He got paid to do it. You know why P. Diddy did? Was telling y'all to vote or die? These guys were getting paid. Oprah getting paid. All these celebrities, Eminem getting paid. You think these, guys, these people do this for free? No, they get paid millions of dollars to endorse this. And why are black people are the 15% in the first place? Why is their vote so important? If you're the 15% of the population, your vote won't even count. Think about, think about what they're trying to tell you. They, they don't care about your vote in the first place. All they care about is making black people feel some type of way for getting abused every four years. They're pretty much telling you, you got to vote for us because you're black. Vote or die. If you don't vote for us, you ain't black. Blah, blah, blah. They're pretty much telling you, sorry, we didn't do nothing for you again. That's what they're pretty much saying. But vote for us anyways. Well, four years will pass again. <laughs> it ain't going to do nothing for you. It don't matter if they're Democrat. I'm not saying say vote Republican. You can't vote anyway. The popular vote don't elect the president in the office. We already did a video on that. That's in the law. Only the electoral college and those go to the representatives of the state. The delegates. So anybody telling you that your vote counts, whether black, white, Asian, Spanish, we'll do a video on it tomorrow. They're lying to you. Your vote don't count. As a citizen, you only get the popular vote. You don't get, you're not in electoral college. So you can let these people, whoever's telling people this, either they're misinformed, they're lying, or they don't know what they're talking about. This is the law. No citizen can vote in their vote counts to elect the president. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. That's why there's two different uh, voting options. And the citizens only get the popular vote. That doesn't elect the president. So you guys tell me what you think, man. Because I'm I'm done with Victor Wimbyama. If, if if he ain't scoring thirty in in twelve by at least the All Star break, I'm done with this guy. He's a bust.